<clears throat> Mr. Speaker, I yield five minutes to the first and only Iraq War veteran to serve in this body, member of the 82nd Airborne Division who received the Bronze Star and his unit received the Presidential Unit Citation. I yield five minutes to the gentleman from Pennsylvania, Mr. Murphy. The gentleman from Pennsylvania is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate it. I take the floor today not as a Democrat or a Republican, but as an Iraq War veteran who was a captain with the 82nd Airborne Division in Baghdad. I speak with a heavy heart for my fellow paratrooper specialist Chad Keith, specialist James Lambert, and 17 other brave men who I served with who never made it home. I rise to give voice to hundreds of thousands of patriotic Pennsylvanians and veterans across the globe who are deeply troubled by the President's call to escalate the number of American troops in Iraq. I served in Baghdad from June of 2003 to January of 2004. Walking in my own combat boots, I saw firsthand this administration's failed policy in Iraq. I led convoys up and down Ambush Alley in a Humvee without doors. Convoys that Americans still run today because too many Iraqis are still sitting on the sidelines. I served in Al-Rashid Baghdad, which, like Philadelphia, is home to 1.5 million people. While there are 7,000 Philadelphia police officers serving, like my father in Philadelphia, protecting its citizens, there was only 3,500 of us in Al-Rashid Baghdad. But, Mr. Speaker, the time for more troops was four years ago. But this president ignored military experts like General Shinsheki and General Zinni, who in, 19, in 2003 called for several hundred thousand troops to secure Iraq. Now, Mr. Speaker, our president again is ignoring military leaders, patriots like General Colin Powell, like General Abizade, and members of the bipartisan Iraq study group who opposed this escalation. But most importantly, Mr. Speaker, Congresses in the past do not stand up to the President and his policies. But today I stand with my other military veterans, some who were just elected, like Sergeant Major Tim Walls, Admiral Joe Sestak, and Commander Chris Carney. We stand together to tell this administration that we're against this escalation and that Congress will no longer give the President a blank check. Mr. Speaker, close to my heart is a small park on the corner of 24th and Aspen Streets in Philadelphia. This is the Patrick Ward Memorial Park. Patrick Ward was a door gunner in the U.S. Army during Vietnam. He was killed serving the country that he loved. He was the type of guy that neighborhoods devote street corners to, and parents named their children after, including my parents, Marge and Jack Murphy. Mr. Speaker, I asked you how many more street corner memorials are we going to have for this war? This is what the President's proposal does. It sends more of our best and bravest to die refereeing a civil war. Just a month ago, Sergeant Jay Moon from my district in Levittown, Bucks County, was killed in Iraq. You know, a few blocks away from this great chamber, when you walk in the snow, is the Vietnam Memorial where half the soldiers list, listed on that wall died after America's leaders knew our strategy would not work. It was immoral then, and it will be immoral now, to engage in the same dis delusion. That's why, Mr. Speaker, sending more troops in the Civil War is the wrong strategy. We need to win the war on terror, and reasonable people may disagree on what to do, but most will agree that it is immoral to send young Americans to fight and die in a conflict without a real strategy for success. The President's current course is not resolute. It is reckless. That is why I will vote to send a message to our President that staying the course is no longer an option. Mr. Speaker, it's time for a new direction in Iraq. For my time serving with the 82nd Airborne Division in Iraq, it became clear that in order to succeed there, 
you must tell the Iraqis that we will not be there forever. Yet, three years now since I have been home, it's still Americans leading convoys up and down Ambush Alley and securing Iraqi street corners. We must make the Iraqis stand up for Iraq and set a timeline to start bringing our heroes home. That's why I'm proud to be an original co-sponsor with Senator Barack Obama and fellow paratrooper Congressman Mike Thompson, the Iraq De-Escalation Act, a moderate and responsible plan to start bringing our troops home, mandating a surge in diplomacy and refocusing our efforts on the war on terror in Afghanistan. Mr. Speaker, our country needs a real plan to get our troops out of Iraq, to protect our homeland, and secure and refocus our efforts on capturing and killing Osama bin Laden and al-Qaeda. There are over 130,000 American servicemen and women serving bravely in Iraq. Unfortunately, thousands more are on the way. Mr. Speaker, an open-ended strategy that ends in more faceless roadside bombs in Baghdad and more street corner memorials in America is not one that I will support. I yield back the remainder of my time.